Now, how does this all tie in together? We have an idea of what's called a holon. A holon is a whole, but it's part of something else. It's part of another whole. So this would go, see, this is one holon right here. Comes with this holon, comes with this holon, comes with this holon, comes with this holon. It actually creates a brand new holon. So let me draw it out real quick so you can see where we're going. Each of these are holes, but they're parts of another hole, right? These come together to create this one. But what happens then is they create this other hole, infinite, forever, right? Each one of these holes is an interior. It has an exterior, and it has a, a collective component. So each of them has an inside, an actual experience. From the atom all the way down, there's an actual mind, there's an interiority. There's the exterior. Then there's a collective component, something we call now an emergent property. For some reason, what happens with reality is when things come into relation, a new thing comes into being. You've heard the saying, the whole is more than the sum of the parts. For some reason, when things come together, they take an evolutionary step. This can be traced back through, through all the whole evolutionary process from Big Bang until now. An example is uh, parts of the airplanes coming together. Right? You have the, the main integral parts of an airplane. By themselves, they can't fly. But you put all the pieces together, a new capability comes into play. They now have flights. So here, how can we see this right here? Evolutionary, we can see this in atoms, molecules, and cells. Atoms come together, they form molecules. But now those have chemical properties, properties that weren't here in the data. Then they come together to form cells, biological life properties that weren't together, weren't there the molecules. Atoms, molecules, and cells come together, you know, they come to organisms, organs, and then organisms, and then hold the political system, the psyche, the whole thing that evolves out of this way of being. And what happens though with holons, it's, it's something we call depth and span. I say atoms, molecules, cells, it, a lot of people are going to like this because it's kind of seems hierarchical, like a pyramid. There's going to be more atoms and molecules, right? And there's going to be more molecules and cells. It's just the way it is. There's, there's, when we go all the way up to human beings and so on, there's more human. Be there's less human beings than there are atoms because we're made up of them. But say you destroy the atoms, the whole thing falls apart. So say these are the cells. But you can destroy the cells, and universally, the molecules and atoms will still exist. If you destroy molecules, the cells and the molecules go away, but atoms still exist. There's like a higher level component. Atoms are more foundational than molecules. More foundational themselves. Another idea is that they transcend and include. The molecule transcend and includes the atom. The cell transcend and includes the cell. They're still there. They take on what came, those properties that came before, and take it to another level. They're still there. And you don't repress, you don't leave it behind. So the, you'll see this when we talk about levels of development right now, human development. Each level of development takes what came before, it takes it to another step. You don't leave any of it behind, it builds on what it is. Now let's get to the basic evolutionary models. Teilhard de Chardin, he was a paleontologist, a Christian holistic scientist in the beginning of the 1900s. And he said, first let me say these next people talk about say consciousness was foundational. It was always in the beginning since the Big Bang. So, but in the model itself, he said we went from pre-life to life, and then to God. Now look at this historically. You know, you guys know the story, right? Big Bang comes around, star explodes, we come together to atoms. There's a cosmological story that our paradigm now holds. Pre-life, the matter. Life, biological life, is what's thought our realm of consciousness, of self-reflection. They also put it to the geosphere, his way to the biosphere, his way to the noosphere. This 
sphere of matter, you move into the sphere of life, you move into the sphere of mind. What happens is though, just to do this no more, they're naturally, they're nested. It's like you've nested, is the geosphere is here. This is this kind of the view of the pyramid, just a little more realistic right now. And inside that grows the biosphere, and inside that grows the noosphere. So it's kind of transcendent includes each one actually is in, inside of the other. Aurobindo actually came a few years before. And he said it moves from matter to life to the mental and then to the supramental. He was an Indian sage. This guy's a uh, he was a Christian priest. One's east, one's west. They're coming from different sides of the world, but they both the five things with each other came up with the same model. It's a like it's an evolutionary like flow of spirits. It's a, the consciousness of itself is at the beginning, manifesting through this. And both of them say mind was first. There's still interiority. There's an inside of things. See what happens is when there's greater complexity, consciousness comes out of that. When comes greater complexity, I realized the other day in class, means greater realm of relationships. When we say complexity. Right, we see dots, dots, connecting, 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 connecting. Complexity means greater connections, greater relationship, which means greater depth. Now you have this system of complexity inside the atom, quarks and so on, connecting make great complexity with the molecules, all connecting great complexity in cells. My body has trillions of atoms, billions of cells, and so on, creates a great level of complexity and depth in my being, in the very foundation of evolutionary level. So from this realm of being, there's all this complexity going inside with many levels of depth creating this human experience of, of consciousness. Now this realm, just to make it more contem contemporary, I believe the next one's going to be called me. Instead of super mental, it's kind of old. So it's like there's a realm behind thought, behind conceptual thinking. Right now we, we're thinking, we form this identity, this mind, this concept, but there's a soul experience behind the mind. You know, the mind is a mental construct, a conditioning. You know, I'm born, I have this life, I've given my name, I have an identity. But there's something that came before that, something unmanifested. If you believe it, maybe I'll say like reincarnation, like I came in this life with a purpose. There's still a being behind that. You know, the purpose of meditation and so on. It's kind of just clear, dissolve that construct so I can work from that place from now on. Which is far more intuitive, which is more here and now. And that's a big idea of like being here in the body, because without doing that, you're kind of just floating around in space, your mind's in the past and the future and so on. But to get grounded here, you know, it's kind of powerful, and that's like the beingness. I come to being, I'm just existing, which is a dynamic thing. Let's clear some of this stuff out of the body. Wilbur, I thought he did a great evolutionary model, it simplified a lot of the human evolution and stuff. Can we first move from ego center? To ethnocentric? See, we go through this process again. The human race has gone through this and we're still evolving through this. The more born, you know, two, three, so on, we form this conception of a self, the ego itself, which is me, 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 me. I'm being ruled by my impulses and so on. I am my greatest concern, my individual experience. You know, I'm differentiated from the world, this is all I know. Then the next stage of development is ethnocentric, so now I'm caring about a group. It's still us versus them. I care about my family, I care about my nation, my religion, so on. But there's a division that takes place. It's not caring about the whole. And so my group's better than your group. I care about my group. I'll die for my group and so on. But there's still another. There's still a war that takes place. It's still an I versus you attitude. You realize that this is you. People go to a war. This, most of the world's still, kind of right here still. You move into world-centric, where it's kind of a we space. We're so long you're me versus you. My religion versus your religion. It's like, yeah, we're all in this together. There's a humanistic stance where we become the humanitarian. We care about each other. So now you kind of care about the globe as a whole. It's no longer my country. You don't even see lines anymore. Cosmocentric with a K is more of a spiritual stance. It's like, hey, we're all beings, we're all spirits, we're, all, we're this divinity, the world, the whole process going through. You can look at an alien and be like, yo, like we're the same thing going on. It's not a division. You look at an animal, a tree, and be like, 
what animates you is what animating me. It's the one which takes it out of the realm of just human beings.